Hi all, uh, Ross here, Thomas Classic and Modern. Just thought I would post this uh, video uh, following on from some of the other stuff that we've done. Uh, apologies for not doing the intro actually before we did it, but we rolled it out originally as one video and it turned out to be far, far too long. You'd have all been bored. Uh, I was bored trying to edit it, so I thought I'd put it out in a few different sections. So this is the second stage of our 1360 build where we'll show you how we go about installing the crankshaft to the freshly cleaned engine block and also checking the crankshaft clearance. So here we go. Okay, so we're now at a point where this is fully cleaned, uh, crankshaft fully cleaned through, block all fully cleaned, we are ready to start assembly. Um, so we've got everything laid out here that we, we are likely to need. Um, I will just uh, show you something that I mentioned, which is our uh, modified uh, main caps. So this is a brand new set of ACL bearings, which we tend to use on 99% of our builds, unless we are using um, the race version of these. So we we'll just open these. Okay. So these bearings, even though this is an A plus block, uh, we have had the main caps modified so that they take the side tag which is the earlier style A series bearing and the reason that we do that is on the A series bearings there is this oil groove right the way through both bearings on the um, A plus unit which this is um, but on the later bearings only the one side of those bearings has that oil groove. Uh, much better for oil flow, uh, that's the reason we do it. So we get just a clean white cloth, just wipe the bearing down. And then that slides in situ, locate the tag, and push them and that is it that's in situ exactly the same with this one and the way I do it is I put all three in the engine first and then I put all three in the caps Again, just make sure everything is clean. Low plate the side tag and push in. That's now all of those ready. So we now get our build lube. We use Torpo engine assembly lube. Uh, we use this on all the old bearings. Um, with this, engine first
and then we do exactly the same with the caps. You will notice that I am using an awful lot of this. Usually if this is an engine that we are going to install uh, fairly soon, uh, as in we're going to build it and it's going straight in a car, I won't use anywhere near this much. As this engine is being uh, shipped and I don't know how long it's going to take uh, the customer to actually sort of marry it up to the gearbox head etc etc I am using plenty of this um, it, it's stick as you can see it's very very sticky yes it's cold in here um, but it is very sticky it won't go anywhere so this engine has some form of lubrication um, ready for shipping So that is those well and truly plastered. So what I do with these now is again engine assembly lube. Plenty of it on them because this is going to act as a bit of an adhesive for us uh, to hold these in place in the block while we drop the crank in important note the side with the grooves flank side side with the grooves the side with the grooves goes to the crankshaft uh, we have seen many an engine ruined uh, by thrusts being installed incorrectly they have to go with that lubricating slot that is the friction surface that must go to the crankshaft, not to the engine block. That is now placed in situ. Quick wipe of the mitts, and we will pick up the crankshaft and drop it in place. Crankshaft in situ. I will just show you the modified oil ways on the crankshaft. Okay, so that's the crank dropped in situ. First washers in place, and I just thought I'd take the opportunity to show you the modified oil ways. So that scoop now, that teardrop shaped scoop, ties in exactly in the centre of that oil groove that I showed you and they are all on the mains modified exactly the same way. It's uh, something that uh, our very good friend Keith Carver informed us about and uh, we have been doing this ever since uh, he gave us that information and will continue to do so. Um, it does help with the oil flow, uh, the centrifugal force then of, uh, of picking up the oil is uh, an awful lot better coupled with those early style main bearings um, that have the um, oil groove all the way around them so that's the modifications to that okay so the first thing i do after the crankshaft is in now is we take our other two bust washers these are the two with the ears on that go in the center main uh, sorry the uh the, yeah the center main we do exactly the same with these. These drop on, again, imperative that the groove side goes to the crankshaft. So we drop those into the main bearing carrier the correct way around. Small amount of build lube on the thrust faces. And then we drop the carrier into place 
and the um, tags on the bearings must line up with each other. So the tags line up with the tags in the block. Drop that into place. Two bolts. And then we will nip those up and we'll check our crankshaft end float. So I like to just nip these up with a socket, uh, ratchet and socket first of all, just to make sure everything feels all okay. So we just, they nipped. Crankshaft turns absolutely fine, give it a couple of rotations. That not only spreads the lubrication around, but it, uh, it ensures there's no tight spots or anything. And then we'll carry on, we'll fully torque this, and then we'll check our crankshaft input. Okay, so torque on these main bearing bolts is 85 newton meters. Still check the crank rotates nice and easily. There is a fair bit of drag on that crank. In all honesty, that's because of the build lubricant that I slathered on there. Uh, under normal circumstances, that would, it, it still will turn with my finger and my thumb. Uh, but we're coupled with the cold weather and the, the treacle-like consistency of that build lube, that's all that's causing that. But there's absolutely no tight spots. That is good to go. We'll now move on to checking the crankshaft end float. Okay, so how I check my crankshaft end float is exactly this way. Um, we have a magnetic stand, DTI. I always put a uh, crank bolt in, gives a much bigger surface uh, for things to locate on. Uh, you don't have to, some people do it the other end and use the thrust bearing face. Other people leave this cap off and use this face. Whatever works for you, it doesn't really matter. Uh, the measurement is the critical thing. And what I do is in the center main, uh, there are two slots where the ears locate for the thrusts. I've got a screwdriver, I slot in, which fits ideally in there. You're not uh, swinging on the world here. You are literally just moving the crankshaft back and forth in its bearing carrier that is all you're doing um, and how i do it is just a little bit of pressure pushing that way make sure that the ddi is zeroed which it is and then opposite side of the main bearing carrier and push the crank back this way so that gives us That is exactly three then. I'm just double check it, so that should go back to zero. It does. Other way takes it to three then. Factory clearance is one to five. Three is exactly what I aim for, um, and that is absolutely spot on. Three though with a new set of standard thrusts. That is perfect. More than happy with that. We will go with that. That's perfect. Okay, so we've just dropped on the remaining caps um, in situ. Now with the ARP mains washers that we use on all of the mains, uh, hardened steel washers, and we'll just now retorque 85 newton meters check the crank 
turns every time you talk something. And that's it, we are fully torqued, end float set, and ready for the next stage in the build. Okay, so that is the crankshaft now fully installed in the 1360, end float set correctly, ARP mains washers in situ, all torqued up, ready to go, and ready to move on to the next stage, which is now for us to fit the pistons to the rods, and uh, we'll show you that in the next video. Thanks very much for watching. Hope to see you soon.